Good morning lovely souls. How are you all doing today? I hope you're well. At the very end of February, month 46. Oh my goodness. Life feels a little bit better at the moment. Um, and my hair's wet. I've just got out of the bath. Oh, there's something luxurious about having a bath in the morning, isn't there? Because yesterday I was shoveling horse um, in the garden and oh my goodness, my body is cross with me, goodness knows. Yeah, I had a long soak when I got home from the garden. This morning getting up, I was like, oh yeah, my knees are still cross. So I'll have another long soak, which is really naughty. Two baths in one week, goodness me. And it's not even my birthday. But yeah, oh, so I'm feeling lovely and chilled and relaxed this morning. And just been reflecting in the last few days. We've had a load of sunshine in the last couple of days. And boy, oh boy, does it make a difference. Such a difference. Not just sunshine, but some real warmth in that sun too. It massively, massively lifts me up. I've always said I don't mind being in the garden in the depths of winter. <clears throat> and if it's a really grey, chilly day, put the layers on. I just want to be out there. But it's so much nicer to be out there when it's sunny and warm. And we've got to that time of year when a lot of the other pot holders are coming back after, you know, a lot of people just don't go to their gardens in the winter at all. A lot of us, we go, we go there to harvest our food. We're there for such a brief amount of time, the chances of bumping into one another are really slim. So it's been lovely these last few days. Folk are returning in their droves. And this thing about the sun and the warmth lifting us up, oh my goodness, it's, it's palpable from everyone else too. There's this chatter and you can hear it in people's voices their tone is lighter and brighter and slightly higher than when we see folk in the winter and it's all a bit mm. people are smiling people are shouting across the plots hey how are you happy new year because some of us haven't seen each other this year yeah it's it's palpable that's what i'll say It definitely feels like we're coming out of winter at last, thank goodness. I don't particularly enjoy winter. I'm gonna talk about this and how I've coped this year a bit more in a second. Yeah, I don't particularly enjoy it. I'm definitely a summer girl. I like sunshine, I like warmth. I even like heat, as long as it's not 42 degrees in my flat like it was last summer. Oh, in that heat wave, that was ghastly. But yeah, I'm naturally a summer person. So winter is always a bit of a struggle, despite my best efforts to get outside, to get some light, what have you. Um, and every year, a sort of by the end of about October, because we can quite often have lovely sort of bright warm days in October here. But we get to about the end of October, beginning of November, the weather changes, we start to get those gray, wet, miserable frankly days although i'm trying not to use that word <clears throat> and every year it comes to that point and i dread i dread the next few months i dread it based on past experience because i know that i i can get really really down in the winter last winter the winter of 2019-20 uh i had an absolute horror of a winter i've never Ex well, I was going to say, I've never experienced depression like that because I did get really depressed. Don't worry, I'm going to cheer up in a second. This isn't a doom and gloom video, honestly. But yeah, I got... I've had periods of depression in my life before. But more often than not, they are... They are a response to a specific thing. The death of a loved one, for example. The loss of, you know... A job or health or you know any of those things so in the past you know I have had moments of depression but usually you know after four or five days I lift myself out and I'm sort of back to normal for a few weeks 
but that winter, that previous winter, it was, I just, I sank so low and I just couldn't work a way out to get out of it. And it all sort of became self-fulfilling, you know, I sort of, I'd wake up and I'd go, oh God, I'm so depressed. Oh, this is going to be a horrible day. Oh, by the end of the day, it's like, oh, well, I knew it was going to be a horrible day. Oh. And it, so, so it spiralled down. It was utterly horrible. By the spring, I started to perk up. I'd perk up naturally with the light and the warmth anyway. And, um, you know, I'd had, a, I'd had opportunities sort of through January and February to talk to close friends, talk things through. That always helps. But as we approached this winter, and I, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that I talked about this maybe at the end of October last year, I'm not sure, but I say I'm pretty sure, and then I say I'm not sure. I think I did. I certainly thought it anyway. I sort of said to myself, I am not, I am not having a winter as bad as that last one. I, I can't, I just can't do it. Because the thing about depression is, it just makes everything grind to a halt. It sort of, it, it almost becomes impossible to work. So that previous winter, my productivity was really low. So, in, you know, the winter is the ideal time for me to be sewing, needle and thread sewing, making things for my shop, et cetera, et cetera. But there were so many days when I just, I could barely lift a finger. It was awful. Anyway, so I said to myself coming into this winter, I don't want to experience that again. I don't want to experience it just from that emotional point of view. But also I can't afford to, you know, I'm on my own. I've got to keep going, <laughs> I've got to keep working, got to keep producing. <clears throat> so it's been interesting. And this winter has been nowhere near as bad as last winter. And I think all of it, all of it was because of this. So as we went into the winter, I sort of promised myself to be really mindful about my feelings and then if I felt myself going down that I'd have to be my own coach as it were and it was almost on a daily basis but I had to keep reminding myself that it's probably normal and natural to feel a bit low in the winter because of less daylight hours and then even when it's daylight hours it's it can be quite dark out there we've suddenly got another really dark day today which is why I've um, drawn my chair up into the window again but yeah I keep reminding myself that um, it's normal to feel different at different times of year it's okay it will pass spring will come let's do something as a distraction instead of wallowing and that's kind of pretty much what I did literally every day I would just sort of say to myself this is going to pass there will be summer again, there will be spring. What are you gonna to do today to occupy yourself? You know, I, I, and I made sure in the flat, for example, I made sure I was quite tidy all the time because quite often I get a bit chaotic. But I kept the flat tidy. I had an extra big pile of blankets on the sofa. So I just made the, my home look really lovely and cozy all winter so that if I'm going to be here, let it be a pleasure. That was the other thing I was sort of saying to myself as well, is that, you know, you're in a really privileged position, Vivi, to be able to, you know, you've got a lovely home. I've got a lovely home. I love my little home. So embrace that. Embrace being here through the winter. Enjoy how lovely it is. Enjoy those kind of winter pleasures of, reading curled up under blankets enjoy the sound of the sewing machine chug 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 chugging along enjoy the pleasure i get from creating so yeah it hasn't been an easy winter it never is but my goodness it was not a downright horrible depressing winter like the previous one um December was awful, absolutely awful. Literally, way this December we've just had wave after wave of crap thrown at me. Um, 
and I got down about certain things at times. I really got down. I got overwhelmed at times because it was just like, oh, for God's sake, just can the world just give me a break? I just need a break. I need a rest. Ah. But even with all that going on, I still came through it better this year than in previous years because of that attitude change. To begin with, I think I really had to force that attitude change. But actually, as we've come into this year, January and February, I haven't really felt that I've had to force myself. I have checked in with myself a few times. I've kind of gone, oh, that little voice, that little negative voice that's trying to get, trying to pull you down. That little voice is going off, time to <clears throat> silence it, throw it away. Yes. I don't know if this translates for any of you, but I, I guess one of the things, one of the reasons to share this is to say, we can do a lot for ourselves just by changing our mindset, just by being aware of what our own little voices are doing to us, shut them up, chuck them away. You know, life wasn't perfect this winter. Life is never perfect, of course it's not. But I tell you what, it wasn't miserable. And when you think about it, we've had lockdown this winter as well. I mean, life in lockdown for me isn't too dissimilar from my normal life, really, because in my normal life, I don't go to restaurants and cafes, I don't go to pubs, I don't go to nightclubs, I don't go shopping. You know, I don't do a lot of that stuff that has been closed and restricted for most people. So there's no difference for me from that point of view. The big difference though, obviously, has been the just the thing of being able to meet with people, share time with people. I've been in solitary confinement for months. And obviously, you know, last March when we went into that first lockdown, the weather was gorgeous. I was in the garden almost every day. And even though we couldn't sort of sit and chat or, you know, have a bottle of wine together late in the evening in the garden, being there, there were so many people doing their gardens, I did get to see folk and have conversations at a distance, what have you. This lockdown, oh my goodness, yeah, solitary confinement, which I think prisons use as a punishment, don't they? What I'm trying to say is, you know, with a bit of that, I've not only got through winter, but a locked down winter. Seriously, if I can do it, you can do it. Give it a go next year, next winter. Just keep keep being your own coach. So yes, um, a bit of sunshine, a bit of warmth in the last few days. Oh, it honestly it makes the biggest world of difference. I think another big difference, especially January and February this year, is did I talk about this? Oh, do you know what? I just don't have the capacity to remember things anymore. It's all disappearing. I think it was at the end of last year, um, New Year's Eve, and I was saying that I don't make New Year's resolutions as such. Uh, but it does seem to be a natural time when we reflect, evaluate, assess how that previous year has been. And bearing in mind that kind of hideousness of December last year, uh, and I got myself in a bit of a tizzy, and, and then sort of by Christmas, I was like, right, okay, I was kind of starting to have all sorts of different thoughts. And then I had, and it was just the most perfect timing. I had my social bubble with Richard and Paul at New Year's. And it was great, just talk, 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 and then, you know, ideas come out and they bounce them back to me and it goes back and forth until this sort of very vague idea sort of gets solidified down, gets kind of pinpointed. And it, what, what became clear to me is, no, I don't make news resolutions, I don't make any of these big changes, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I've done it in the past and, you know, failed within a day or two. 
But I decided I really did need to make some changes in some areas. But they were tiny, tiny changes. And I spoke a bit about this at the end of January. <clears throat> I was saying, making all these little tweaks. Um, and I definitely think it's worth considering if you're in a similar situation. And I don't mean with the, you know, being wage free. But in that situation where you feel like you're frequently becoming overwhelmed by stuff, demands of other people, outside influences, your own pressures that you put on yourself. <clears throat> I'd made lists, <laughs> you know, I'm a list maker. What do I like? What do I not like? What's working well? What's not working well? And there are some things which I like, but that weren't working well. It's like, well, I want to keep it because I like it, but if it's not working well, how can I make it work better? So I, I'm not great with change, like big changes. So moving house, oh, that terrifies me. That's too big a change. Leaving work, oh, that's terrifying. It's, it's a big change. Getting into or getting out of a relationship, oh. But lots of little changes, oh my goodness, they can add up. So I'm continuing to implement these little changes that um, that I talked about at the end of the year and at the end of January. They're really helping, really, really helping. And most of it's to do with my time management. Now, it's not like I've got poor time management, as in I'm wasting time on nothing. It's more that I've been trying to do too much every day. So some things were siding and... Uh, but by making a lot of small tweaks to lots of different areas of my life, those small tweaks, they're all adding up to a bit more time and allowing myself to be like sort of super disciplined and super organised. I know people think I'm quite organised anyway. And I guess I am, but I've now become super duper uber organised, allocating days for specific tasks. One of the big things is... Now, each day, I, I sort of look at what my priorities are. Quite often the things which are priorities are things which might take up six or eight hours. So on those days, I'll allocate that day, that's my priority that day, that's the thing I'm going to do. But I've got a second little list of the sort of the smaller jobs, it's like, right, if after eight hours of doing that priority, if I've still got another four or five hours of energy left, I can start dealing with some of those smaller things. But if I don't, it's again, it's this mindset thing, isn't it? Is instead of beating myself up for not doing them, just acknowledge, well, actually, you know what? I'm human. There's only so much I can do each day. That's helping massively. A big one, a big priority, little bits and bobs and really really trying hard not to beat myself up uh because i'm really good at that i think we all are i think i think we all are way too hard on ourselves i think the way we speak to ourselves as in that internal monologue that goes on the way we speak to ourselves is horrible at times we would never speak to a best friend loved one the way we speak to ourselves so yeah stop that if you do that you know just stop it stop 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 that's a little tweak you can make straight away too so that's all good um what it all what it, what it all boils down to is there is that natural rhythm of the year when the garden is going to now start to take up much more of my time more garden time means less sowing time, so the winter has to be about the sowing, things like that. But I do need to keep sowing through the summer because I still need to bring that little bit of income in. And I'd actually like to grow that more. Um, grow the sowing as well as grow the sowing. <laughs> I was saying this in a comment to someone the other day that... Um, it's a bit awkward, isn't it, that the two big loves in my life are sewing and sewing. Sewing. Seats. Sewing. Needle and thread. And sometimes people get confused about what I'm talking about. 
maybe I should call it stitching. Anyway, I digress, sorry. Um, so I need to keep those things going through the year. And hopefully with these little tweaks, with just kind of, you know, taking an overview of the whole year, being a bit more organised, a bit more disciplined, hopefully I can do it all. Um, just on the word of gardening, because also, welcome, welcome, welcome. So many lovely new subscribers over the course of this month. You are all very warmly welcomed here. Hello, glad you arrived. Uh, there's always space for you here. Thank you, of course, though, to all my ancient subscribers. Oh, we're all getting old now, aren't we? Um, a word on the videos. Uh, we are coming into this sort of eight month chunk of time that is it's gardening, 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 gardening. That's inevitable because one of the main reasons I can live this sort of beyond frugal life, I can live this subsistence life, this life without a wage. One of the main reasons I can do that is because I've produced so much of my own food. If I was having to buy all that food, I'd need an extra income from somewhere. So, we are going to go into a period where there will be more gardening videos, but it's not, it's not just gardening, how to put it? it, I don't know how to put it, I've gone blank. It's kind of like the heart, it's harvesting and producing as well. So, um, and I know a few folk have said they're not really into the gardening, there will be other videos as well. Recently I did that video on my subsistence budget. Thank you so much for all your comments. My goodness, you were fantastic with all your comments. Thank you. Um, and out of that, people have said they want to know more. <laughs> They'd like more of that kind of video. I don't know how much more there is for me to say on the subject. There are a few ideas up here. So I will explore those at some point. But yeah, so if you're if you're new to the channel and you came because of that kind of frugal budgeting, subsistence budgeting, uh, that's not the only thing I do. <laughs> it's just a tiny, tiny part of what I do. It's just a tiny, tiny part of what I do. But hopefully, I'm gonna have a think on it anyway and see if I can think of more subject areas in that kind of subsistence living, budgeting, money stuff. Uh, you know, at the time when I when I posted that video, I was trying to sort of say in the video, I'm completely upfront about talking about money. To me, it's not a secret. Uh, when you think of it, pretty much everyone on the planet, bar a very, very, very few, pretty much everyone on the planet needs money for, uh, you know, however much, however little, for whatever they need it for. We all need money, we all spend money. So yeah, I'm really happy to talk about that because, you know, if it helps someone, if it gives someone ideas, then great. That's great, let's be open about all this stuff. It's funny, isn't it? It's one of those subjects that's, ooh, it's so taboo. I've never understood that. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't, I'm not gonna sort of go to a dinner party and say, how much do you earn per year? You know, or how much did you pay for your house? How much is your house worth? That's so 90s dinner party, isn't it? How much did you pay for your house and how much is it worth now? Not interested from that point of view. But if we can share together, if we can share some tips on how to save a bit here and there, yeah, great, let's do it. Because let's face it, you know, there's a lot of us who don't have a lot of money. And I think, oh, you know, it. Oh, it breaks my heart to think of it, but there's going to be so many people after this year of COVID um, who have been really, really affected financially. So yeah, I'm more than happy to share if it can help someone. If I help one person through talking about it, then I'll be really happy. So uh, it's going to be a short one today. Lots for me to do today. There's stuff as always on the table waiting for me to deal with that some more oh it's some more shop stock it's so lovely it's postcards of the ladybird book covers they're gorgeous can't wait they're all photographed they've all been catalogued i just need to now catalog them into the computer 
Um, and then, oh my goodness, finally, so overdue with this, but I don't know whether I'll get a chance today, and also the light isn't brilliant, and it's something I want to do in the light. I've been cutting and cutting and cutting like mad, so I've got all my squares ready to do my patchwork uh, lavender bags, tons of Liberty fabrics again, they are beautiful. But I've got a real assortment, a uh, real assortment of fabrics. So I'm going to have probably a morning, I think, yeah, a morning this week when the light is better to get them all spread out so I can match them up. How do I want them to be? So at the moment, they're all in chunks of sort of, they're, they're yeah, they're separated sort of by colour, but also to a degree pattern because some of them have got a more modern feel some are more vintage what have you so you know it's work but oh my goodness i love it i love it love it love it having all those fabrics out yeah it's like that's me with my paint box painting with fabric i can't wait and i know loads of you have been asking when are you gonna have your lavender bags i'm so sorry um it's one of those things, isn't it? Just remember, it's just me. It's just me doing everything. So I'm hoping that the next time you see me at the end, not the next time you see me, but the next time I'm having my little thoughts on me at the end of March, I'm hoping they'll be in the shop by then. I'll let you know, I'll let you know, both on Facebook and if I do a video near the time, I'll let you know through that. Oh, and I would really like to do some sewing videos. I would love to. <clears throat> that one is always it, it's always a question it's just it's about what blah, 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 blah. <laughs> speak straight for me it always boils to the time issue that's what it always boils down to um you know what what may take me say <clears throat> let's say a lavender bag takes me 45 minutes because there's some hand sewing involved as well if I was to video that, it would probably take an hour and a half or more to video it. And then there's all the editing and the, from the point of getting the footage from the camera into the computer and actually up onto YouTube, that's another five to six hours because my computer's a bit slow. So suddenly that's all day gone making a video about how to make a lavender bag. And honestly, at the moment, I need to use that whole day to make the lavender bags to get them into the shop to sell them but i would love to i would really really like to let's see how this year goes not promising anything i'm not ruling anything out uh but yeah some more budgety stuff a bit more sewing hopefully i just realized i've gone completely off at a tangent do you know what it is i honestly i think it's these last two days of sunshine <sighs> It's coming up, it's coming up, that energy, that joie de vivre. It's brilliant. So I'm gonna leave it there because I've got things to do. I hope, look, I know there's a load of you who've got snow still and uh, spring seems so far off. It is coming. For all of us in the UK, I don't know what's going on in other countries particularly, but with the whole lockdown thing, there's light at the end of the tunnel. When we've got a sunny, warm, bright day, let's make the most of it and get outside if we can. And even if it's a work day, when you're having your lunch break and it's a beautiful day, get outside. See if you can get to a park, be somewhere green. Even if you can't get to a park and be somewhere green, get outside, walk around the block, tilt your face up to the sun, tilt your face up and say, thank you, thank you for coming back. All right, gorgeousities, I will see you again really soon. We'll be talking about what to sew in March. It's all going to kick off in the garden soon. I can't wait. So until then, please look after yourselves. Look after each other. You know, if you know someone who lives on their own, reach out to them, text them, drop them a message. Just check in with them and say, I'm thinking of you. Are you okay? With nicer weather, at some point, maybe we can meet up in the park whenever that's allowed. 
yes, look after yourselves, look after each other, practice changing your mindset and give yourself some love. Right, until next time, cheerio everyone.